EMP. Three letters which really sound like a missed opportunity for an ACDC song, but more importantly, it's a damage type and from the depths. Hello everyone, Ohm here, back with another informational video. But in this one, I'm also going to come out with a really strong piece of opinion. And that is that EMP should probably be removed from the game. Devs have removed uh, features from the game before, and I think EMP is a candidate. But to understand why, we first got to understand how EMP works. All right, so EMP can be delivered using any weapon except lasers. So crams here deal EMP damage if they have EMP pellets. Uh, APS can use EMP warheads. Missiles also have EMP warheads. And particle accelerators also have an EMP setting. So pretty straightforward, you hit something with EMP on it, and once it hits the target, hopefully, it will deliver the EMP charge. Now the EMP will try to find a path through the enemy vehicle that deals the most damage, and this can be visualized pretty clearly here. So, little tip here, but since the patch last year, the stats of different blocks have changed. And in this case, heavy armor is a perfect conductor of EMP. It has no resistance to it. It doesn't reduce its damage and it doesn't take damage from EMP. So it's basically a lightning rod. Now we have the EMP tool here, which I set to a thousand damage. Now remember, EMP tries to do the most damage and it will damage any block that is susceptible to it. And you can find that out simply by hovering over the blocks. Now, I'm not going to list every block, but basically most AI components, detection, um, local weapons controllers, ACBs, breadboards, um, the basic jets and ions take damage. I believe propellers also take EMP damage. Uh, there's quite a few. Anything that basically sounds like it might have electronics or anything electric controlling it or whatever probably takes EMP damage. So that's how you know. They have different um, susceptibility levels and they have obviously different HP. For instance, this shield has 75 HP but is only 60% susceptible, while the AI has 200 HP and is 100% susceptible. So if I hit this rod, every single time the result is going to be the same because it tries to do the most damage. And boom. Okay, so fun fact, I just discovered that EMP cannot go through a block more than once per hit, right? So I was surprised because when I first did this uh, test before recording the video, I got one result. And then later I added more rubber to make sure that this shield couldn't fall off if this shield was destroyed. And that actually altered my result because it gave EMP a path to go around. So, uh, yeah, apologies about that. But anyway, let's see what happens if we hit this pole. And there we have it, right? So, this has more health. EMP cannot backtrack. So, between the choice of two shields that add up to 150 health, EMP chose the 200 health AI mainframe. That's because it tries to deal the most damage. Now, I'll lower this to 100 to demonstrate what susceptibility does, right? These have 75 HP each, but they only have 60% susceptibility. So if I do this with 100 damage, well, this one took unsurprisingly 60 damage. That's what susceptibility does. But the leftover still kept going and hit this one for 60% of the 40 that was left. And then the rest didn't have anywhere to go, and so the EMP basically stopped existing. Now, moving on, let's put this back to a thousand EMP damage and let's hit these three poles twice. Why twice? Because whatever, <laughs> I want to. Um, so here we have two individual blocks of wood with 15% plus 30 EMP reduction each. Here we have a single two meter beam of wood same stats, obviously, and here we have a single block of rubber, which has 
twice the resistance of wood. What are your predictions here? Well, once and twice, once and twice, once and twice. What happened? Well, the two pieces or the two surge protectors that are basically protected by wood, well, they took the same amount of damage. This means that using individual blocks against EMP is not better than beams. EMP loses damage per meters of materials it has to go through, not per block. So really no advantage to using single blocks, even when it comes to EMP. Now with rubber, you'll notice it has a tiny bit more health. And that's because the reduction of wood is not 15 plus 15. It is 15% 15 of the current amount of damage. So if you reduce the damage once, then reducing it by 15% means you're taking from a smaller amount, which means you're technically decreasing the damage a little bit less than with rubber. So the reduction for damage uh, of EMP when going through materials is going to be looking more like a curve that kind of keeps going down because there's a flat amount of damage associated with every block. But it'll look kind of like a curve, right? Because the lower the damage gets, the lower the percentage actually reduces the damage because it's the current damage. And then I've got a different test for you. What do you think will happen here? I'm going to hit it with... Uh, wait, that's the wrong thing. A thousand EMP damage. Now, this can take a lot more than a thousand. This is only 200, but technically metal has a small reduction. But remember, EMP will not go back, right? So what's your prediction for a hundred or a thousand damage? Is it going to hit the AI or the surge protector? And if I lower the damage to a hundred, is the result going to be the same? And which one is it, do you think? Which block will take the damage? Have you typed your comment yet? Well, here goes nothing. A thousand damage, hitting it. That's right. It tries to do the most damage and it can't go back. So it went for the surge protector because it could deal all of its damage or practically all of its thousand damage to the surge protector. And the AI is completely unharmed. 100% health. And this took basically whatever the surge protector reduction is. I think it is 95%. So 5% of a thousand is, well, 50. But there's a little bit left because the metal offers a tiny bit of protection. Now watch what happens if I stick a hundred damage. Oh. Yes, it hit the AI. Why? Because even though this could also take 100 damage, it wouldn't because it's behind metal, which has a tiny bit of reduction. So in both cases, the target block can take the full 100 damage, but this one wouldn't because it has to go through metal. So that's basically how EMP works. Now, obviously, if you have a lot more connections here, EMP has different paths to go through. You might have more than an AI mainframe here. So do not, I repeat, do not shield your surge protectors from EMP if you want to actually protect the pieces you want to keep because chances are you might actually direct EMP into your AI mainframe or whatever is susceptible to EMP rather than in your surge protectors if you protect your surge protectors. That's a lot of words and protect in... Anyway, moving on. So what does this mean defensively? Well, the ideal scenario would be to have basically the whole outer shell of your vehicle made out of heavy armor with surge protectors on the inside. So anywhere you hit, it's going to go into surge protectors and then have your insides connected via materials that are more resistant. So basically anything that's not heavy armor. That would be the ideal scenario, right? But it doesn't have to be perfect. As you can see here, there is some resistance, but EMP is always going to go through the surge protectors. Just make sure you have enough surge protectors because they will break eventually, right? 
and then your AI goes. So yeah, heavy armor, heavy armor spines, just, you know, the lightning rods so that there is a quick path to your surge protectors can help, short of not making the whole vehicle out of heavy armor. Obviously, it's going to be really expensive and really heavy. But even if you use other materials, let's say you build out primarily out of metal, then alloy will provide well, five times the insulation, which means if you attach things to your vehicle, or at least things that are vulnerable to EMP with alloy and everything else is made out of metal, EMP will go quite a bit further away to hit a surge protector before deciding it's actually worth hitting whatever it is that is connected via alloy because metal is that much less resistant. So keep going through the tiers of materials. So if alloy is not enough, then wood and stone. And those are gonna be your favored options, honestly. Especially stone, it has decent health, or it has the better amount of health between wood and stone. Whereas rubber is more expensive than either. It is heavier than wood. Not heavier than stone, but it is heavier than wood. And it just doesn't have the amount. It, it has less health than wood, even though it's three times the cost and 50% more expensive than stone. So wood and stone are going to be your main options to insulate things. Even if your vehicle is built entirely out of alloy or metal, these materials have fairly significant uh, EMP insulation that if you have surge protectors spread out around your vehicle, EMP will almost always go for the surge protectors, as long as those vulnerable pieces are attached exclusively through insulated materials. Remember, EMP will go around a resistant block if there is a path. So don't forget that. Uh, offensively, what does that mean? Well, if something is built right, you're pretty screwed. And that's part of the reason, or at least it's not part of the reason, it is the main reason why I think EMP is a bad mechanic and should be considered, or is a candidate to be removed entirely as a feature. It's kind of a gotcha mechanic, right? If you protect your vehicle right, you're going to have to destroy a whole lot of surge protectors before you do anything with EMP. But if you don't, it's going to absolutely wreck anything functional on your vehicle. Which is just kind of bad and sad. And then just look visually, right? It's like if you're looking straight at it, fair enough. But look at this turret. It has vulnerable components and... If it's on the surface, you can kind of see it, but if it goes inside, you quickly lose sight of it. It's just not looking very impressive. You'll see one or two blocks fly off because they're the functional blocks. It's just not great to look at. But anyway, I'm getting lost in my uh, rant here. How do you use it offensively? Well, assuming the vehicle is somewhat protected or not protected. If it's not protected, I mean, just hit it with EMP, right? If it is somewhat protected, then rate of fire is going to be one of the main things. Most blocks that are destroyed or damaged by EMP have very low health. So rate of fire and just spreading those hits across the vehicle in the hopes of hitting somewhere where something important is more accessible than a surge protector is going to be your goal. So that makes crams less than ideal. It's not bad to have a little bit of EMP on your crams, but it's just if you want to deliver EMP, there's better ways. Uh, APS is going to be pretty good, though you'll want more than like 100 EMP for sure. There's no clear breakpoint or threshold you should hit, but if you have very low amounts, then a single block of wood or rubber is going to be quite the obstacle to overcome with 15% reduction plus 30 flat, right? That would already have the damage of that APS warhead. Missiles are going to be pretty decent, and particle accelerator cannons are also pretty decent, especially since they're uh, they're hit scan weapons. So just make sure you know you don't have to go for massive damage per hit. Just get that sweet sweet rate of fire. Have your aim point selection change regularly to spread that EMP around, and that'll do you best. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you found this helpful and. Well, maybe this video won't be needed in the future if the devs actually decide to remove EMP, but that's my opinion. I think it, I think it's a 
it's not a great mechanic, it's not visually pleasing, and so on. So it's just, eh, cut, and the gotcha. Anyway, I'm not gonna get into it again. Editor Ohm here. Um, so there's been a lot of talk about EMP on the server between now and the time I made the recording. And in case it wasn't abundantly clear, AP EMP is terrible. It's not going to be better than just pure EMP in 99% of cases. And if you tell me, well, I tested it, test it, Ohm, it works. And yeah, it kind of does, except I don't know what you tested it against, but if the defenses aren't made properly, yeah, it'll work to some, ex uh, to some extent. But so will EMP, just regular old EMP in most cases. Case in point, this is the Hypernova, one of the more uh, recent godly designs from the Scarlet Dawn. And look what happens. A thousand EMP. You hit this little doodad at the back. And oh, are those ring shields? Yeah. I'm repairing. I'll turn that off. Uh, hit this turret cap. Oh. Oh. Are those local weapon controllers? Why, yes, they are. So, uh... Yeah, currently EMP works against just about anything. You fire anywhere and detection will fall off. Even laser pumps will fall off if you just hit the skin. Yeah, there you go. It'll work. So you, there's no need to deliver the payload inside the target. And if something is built right, whether you hit inside or outside the target, same result. So please don't do AP EMP. Just, just don't. Thank you. But uh, yeah, I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please consider subscribing and liking the video. Consider joining the Discord, link in the description. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.